Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want you to imagine this scenario. Imagine that you're a scout and you're at a college game looking at certain prospects, trying to see who could potentially make it at the next level. On the sidelines, you see a guy throwing a ball. He does not play a single minute during the game. You know absolutely nothing about him or how he can read a defense or how he can manage a game or how he handles pressure or anything along those lines. But you like the way he throws a football. And knowing nothing else about him, you decide to spend one of your draft picks on him simply because you saw him tossing a ball around on the sideline. Something like this seems absolutely ridiculous, and rightfully so. By 2021 standards, if you were a scout and said that the only thing you knew about a guy was that you saw him throw a ball on the sidelines, you would be laughed out of the room and fired immediately. But what's crazy is that the Minnesota Vikings once drafted a guy entirely based off of that. And what might be even crazier is the fact that this actually worked. And this is the story of what might just be the craziest draft pick in the history of the Minnesota Vikings. Before I talk about the actual incident and the pick itself, we need some context as to the man in question. That player is a quarterback by the name of Bob Lee, and the story of how he even got to this point is pretty remarkable. At the age of 10, he underwent a fairly high-risk surgery on his sinus. If the surgery went poorly, he could have lost his left eye altogether. However, the surgery went well. Lee went on to play football as a quarterback and a punter, and then decided to go to Arizona State to continue his football career. However, after head coach and future Baltimore Colts coach Frank Cush tried to move him to defensive back, Lee decided to transfer. He went to City College of San Francisco in 1965, and then played his final two seasons in Division I at Pacific. What you're seeing is actual footage that somehow exists of Bob Lee playing college football. The good news for Lee is that for the most part, he put up pretty solid numbers. In 1966, he was sixth amongst all independents in passing touchdowns, which is impressive considering that at the time, there were 32 independent schools. And in 1967, he completed over 52% of his passes. While obviously terrible by today's standards, that was good enough for fifth amongst all independent quarterbacks back then. However, despite some fairly decent numbers, it was highly unlikely that Lee was going to be getting a look. For one, scouts didn't really look at Pacific too often. Yes, you had some exceptions, but from 1965 to 67, not a single player from the school was chosen. The last time a Pacific quarterback got chosen was Eddie LeBarrett in 1950. It also didn't help that Pacific wasn't a good team, finishing below 500 in both of Lee's seasons as the starting quarterback, and playing a ton of schools that were non-majors, and weren't what you would think of today as the FBS. Nine of the 20 games that Lee played in were against these schools. So if Lee wasn't playing great competition, was on a poor team, and was playing well but wasn't exactly lighting it up to the point where scouts and experts couldn't avoid him, how on earth did he wind up getting drafted in the NFL? Let's just say it all started with a family connection. Bob Lee's dad was Paul Lee, a reporter for the Associated Press. His dad served as a journalist for an incredible 46 years, as part of his assignments, he covered games for the San Francisco 49ers. Eventually, he would bring his son to these games, and have his son help out the writers. His job was to relay quotes set in the locker room back to the reporters so that they could finish their stories. As it turns out, while working this job, he made such an impact on a sports writer by the name of Francis J. Powers. It's a completely different guy from the famous Cold War pilot, but oddly enough, both Francis Powers died in the same year. Anyways, Powers was the public relations director for the East-West Shrine Game which is one of the bowl games after the season used to evaluate players eligible for the NFL Draft. He knew Lee from his time in the press box, and knew that he could play. The bad news was that the West team didn't need a quarterback. They had Danny Holman, the San Jose State quarterback who led the entire NCAA in 1966 by completing over 61% of his passes. And they had Gary Beban, the UCLA quarterback who just won the Heisman. Powers, deciding that Lee needed to play in the game, snuck him onto the roster as a kicker. So the fact that Lee was even playing in the East-West Shrine game was a miracle in itself. If he didn't have that connection to the guy who ran the roster selection for the game, then the odds that we even see Bob Lee play professional football are slim to none. The good news for Lee was that he wound up playing in the game, showing off his skills in front of all the scouts. The bad news was that it was as a specialist. He got to punt the ball and got to kick the ball. Lee actually wasn't too bad in this role. Even though the West lost the game 16-14, he hit both extra point attempts and had a punt that went out of bounds at the three-yard line. Lee did all you could ask of him to do during this contest. However, he didn't get a chance to throw the ball. The only player on the West who got to play quarterback was Beban, who had a mixed game by going 17 for 31 with 200 yards and two touchdowns, while also being sacked 10 times. Lee said after the fact that it was disappointing that he wasn't able to play, but that he understood it since Beban was the one that fans wanted to watch. 
Again though, this should not have come as much of a surprise that he didn't play, since he wasn't even listed on the roster as a quarterback to begin with. Powers gave Lee a lifeline by getting him into the Shrine game purely off of a family connection. However, it looked like this was going to be the end of the road for Lee. That was except for one crazy thing, because while every other scout was watching the action take place on the field, one Viking scout was watching what was happening off of it. Jerry Reichow was regarded by many today as a Vikings legend, and rightfully so. After his playing career ended at the end of the 1964 season, with those final four years being spent with the Vikings, Reichow wound up spending the next 55 years in Minnesota's front office. He was one of the main men responsible for constructing some of the greatest rosters in the history of the Vikings franchise. And on December 30th, 1967, he was in San Francisco, sitting in the stands and evaluating the next crop of players to enter the NFL draft. As a specialist, Lee wasn't asked to do a whole lot during the game. He only played on fourth down to kick and punt, meaning that obviously he had a lot of downtime. And during this downtime, he threw on the sidelines. Maybe it was to keep warm. Maybe it was to keep the other quarterbacks loose in case they were asked to go into the game. Whatever the case is, Lee was throwing on the sidelines, and Reichow took notice of this. Keep in mind, obviously, Reichow knew absolutely nothing about Bob Lee, but he liked the way he threw the ball. There was something about his throwing motion that intrigued him. Even though Lee didn't play a single snap at quarterback, Reichow had glowing praise for him. He made a note of his performance and tucked it away for future reference. One month later, it was time for the NFL-AFL draft. Through the first 440 picks, Lee sat there, waiting for his name to be called. Then pick number 441 rolled around, and the Vikings were on the clock. Reichow chimed in and talked about a quarterback he had seen warming up on the sidelines in the Shrine game. Again, all he knew about him was some throws he was making on the sideline in a non-game situation. But considering the fact that we were in the 17th round, it was worth a shot. For some perspective, you never found talent in the 17th round. Of the 26 players to be chosen in that round in 1967, 23 of them never played it down in professional football. Three quarterbacks were chosen in the 17th round in 1967, with the Falcons selecting Bill Buckner, the Jets selecting Bob Litnikoff, and the 49ers selecting Danny Talbot. They went on to throw a combined zero passes. If Reichow believed that much in this guy, even though he knew next to nothing about him, then screw it. By this point in the draft, it was worth a shot. And so, with pick number 441, the Minnesota Vikings selected Bob Lee, the quarterback out of Pacific. How did that pick work out for Minnesota? Somehow, this was an absolutely genius move. For any player to have a 12-year career in the NFL is impressive. If you can play at the highest level that the sport has to offer, then you're doing something right. But for a 17th round pick to do it, when there's a 90% chance that a player chosen in that round won't last a second in the NFL, is nothing short of remarkable. And at the end of the day, Bob Lee went on to have a really solid career in professional football. Lee played all the way until 1980 and lasted eight seasons in Minnesota serving two separate stints of four years each. Here are just some of the highlights of his career. In 1973, he was the starting quarterback on the Atlanta Falcons for the second half of the season, and went 8-2 as a starter, leading the league in yards per completion and finishing inside the top 10 in passing yards and passer rating. During that 1973 season, he had a game against the Chicago Bears where in a 46-6 victory, he completed over 84% of his passes and finished with a perfect passer rating of 158.3. He was the starting quarterback at the end of the 1977 season for the Vikings, led Minnesota to the postseason by winning his final three starts, and won a playoff game too, when he helped lead Minnesota to a 14-7 victory over the Los Angeles Rams in the NFC Divisional. And even though it was mop-up duty, he did get to play at Super Bowl XI, where in place of Fran Tarkenton, he went 7-9 for nine with 81 yards and a touchdown. The story of how Bob Lee got into the NFL in the first place is absolutely ridiculous. If he wasn't working in the press box for his father growing up, that he never becomes acquainted with Francis Powers, never gets into the Shrine game, and probably never plays pro football. And then, if a scout didn't just happen to watch him throw a football, even though he was on the sidelines the entire time and never actually got to play quarterback, he probably never plays pro football. And then, if the scout didn't convince the team to just trust his gut instinct knowing absolutely nothing about him, he probably never plays pro football. Instead, he carves out a pretty nice career for himself, lasting over a decade. Considering the bizarre circumstances, and considering how the pick actually played out, this might just be the craziest draft moment in the over 60-year history of the Minnesota Vikings. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. 
If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.